15 years, for 15 years I used this same basic simple leather wallet. And honestly, I never really thought I would replace it. It always served the purpose, it always did the job. Until I tried this Peak Design mobile wallet. And honestly, I don't think I'm ever going back. So importantly, this video is not sponsored. I have been using this wallet every single day for about a year, and I absolutely love it. So it comes in two different types. There's the stand wallet, which is this one here, which has a hinged stand. And there is the slim wallet, which is the same exact thing, just without the stand. Both are part of Peak Design's Slim Link system, which is a combination of both magnetic and mechanical means to hold different things to your phone or hold your phone to different things. In this case, the wallets have four magnets positioned in a square that align relatively with where your MagSafe magnets are. In the case of the accompanying case, there is a little indented slot which has the ability for mechanical things to grab on for more intense applications like scooters or bikes or motorcycles. The wallets both advertise the ability to hold up to seven cards beneath their very satisfying magnetic flap. I happen to use five on a daily basis and in testing, technically you can get up closer to about nine cards, but I don't think you want to. It's pretty bulky and you wind up having the magnetic flap just barely be able to reach. So I think five is a sweet spot, but seven is sort of the top end of the recommended. My wallet is this charcoal color, which I think is awesome. The color availability does vary by phone model, but the latest models also come in Midnight, which is a blue, Sun, which is yellow, Redwood, red, and Sage green. I think the Midnight color is dope, and I totally would have considered it if it was available for my iPhone 14 Pro. However, I do think the black is great and very versatile. My one word of caution if you're choosing one of the more exciting colors is that there's really no telling whether Peak Design would commit to this color in the long term. And ideally, this is a wallet that's going to be able to last for multiple phone generations, just replacing the case on the phone. And so if you don't want to risk potentially having a mismatch between your colors of your case and your wallet, I'd probably recommend keeping it relatively simple. But also, the colors are cool, so if you want to go for it, have fun. Speaking of the phone case, it's made of nylon and TPU plastic. The wallets are also nylon with a polycarbonate plastic frame in the slim and a zinc nickel plated steel frame in the stand. Now, if you've followed the channel for a while, you know I hate the environmental impact of plastic phone cases. And I put a lot of the blame on phone manufacturers for consistently changing their dimensions slightly and forcing people to toss out old phone cases every new generation. Now, in the past, I've explored biodegradable cases as an alternative to harmful plastics. And while no case is perfect, Peak Design does make an effort in the spirit of sustainability, utilizing 100% recycled blue sign approved nylon. Their products are built to last and come with a lifetime guarantee. So as our phones start lasting longer and longer, it's making more sense to invest in a product that's going to last along with them. And so in short, as long as you're skipping those basic plastic ones on Amazon, you're doing something right. Now, these wallets are not cheap, I will admit that. The stand wallet comes in at $60, the slim wallet without the stand comes in at $50, and if you wanna get the accompanying case, that's another $50. So between case and wallet, you're easily over $100. And that might make you wonder, do you need to have the phone case? Now, the answer is technically no, but you're probably gonna want it. So if you attach one of the wallets directly to your phone or to a similar case with MagSafe magnets built in, you'll run into a bit of a challenge in that the magnets on the phone are circular and the magnets on the wallets are in a square orientation. And what that means is that you'll just have a little bit too much ability to spin around and a little bit of trouble keeping it in place. And that goes for both the slim wallet as well as the stand wallet. It's particularly important with the stand wallet because one of the benefits here is that you can use it in landscape orientation, but without having the case, you don't have any ability for it to lock in where you want it. So by contrast, if you have the included case that has four magnets in the same spot, you can really easily have it lock in in both portrait as well as landscape, and it just makes it a lot easier to get it in place. 
it's not perfectly locked in. There is still flexibility, but it's a much tighter seal than when using it on something that it's not designed to be worked with directly. So at this point, if you're sold on the Peak Design wallet and you're just trying to decide between slim and stand, I had the same conundrum. And so I made a separate video where I'm just gonna look in detail at the pros and cons between the two of these. But now I'm gonna get into the pros and cons of my overall review of this wallet system. Starting with the positives, the look of the Peak Design slim and stand wallet is really cool. I've gotten a lot of compliments on it and I think the black is really sleek, but the colors, if they go with your personal style, could be even cooler. So the first pro is just that, hey, they look awesome. Functionally, the wallet is great as well. So the pull tab is a really brilliant way to do this. You simply pull the magnet back and then slide it out to get to your cards. The one thing I would recommend is putting your most used cards on the top and the bottom because those are gonna be the easiest to grab from. And if you want a card out of the middle, you sometimes are gonna have to take all your cards out and pull out the one that you need. It's a little bit trickier to get to those. But then once you're done, you simply push it back in and the flap magnet's on and you're good to go. The magnetic hold on these wallets is really strong. It's right in the middle of confidence inspiring, but still easy enough to take off. And you might be concerned of this popping off and losing it, which obviously if it's got all of your identification and payment cards in it, is a concern, but I really haven't run into that. Outside of a couple occasions where my phone has dropped, which has caused the wallet to just eject off the back, uh, outside of those scenarios, it really has never come off when I don't want it to. The only time I could really see it happening is if you're pulling your phone in and out of some particularly tight pants pockets, or potentially in a purse or bag if you're tossing it in and it gets caught up on something else in the bag. In either of those cases though, it stays with you and so it shouldn't be a problem. Collectively, the magnetic hold, the magnetic hinge, and also the magnetic flap are all really fun in their own way to fidget with. So if you're somebody that likes to have a little something in your pocket to play around with to keep yourself from getting distracted, it really works for that. I love having it down there and I simply just play with the flap on and off if I need something to fidget with at some point in my day. The stand version of the wallet is truly an awesome bonus. The hinge is amazing. It's stiff, but not too stiff satisfying to open and close and hasn't loosened up over 12 months of daily use. It's perfect for watching video or listening to music and it's something that I wind up doing a lot in my daily life. The stand also doubles as an interesting way to hold your phone. So if you want a little bit of extra grip, you can leave it open and put your phone in there almost like a pop socket. It's important to remember that it's only held on with a magnet, so it could come off, it's not gonna be as secure, but it really gives you a little added, added security if you have a situation where you need to have a better grip on your phone. And on top of that, another interesting use is to put it into the back of an airplane seat. So as you're traveling, if you wanna watch a movie on the plane, you can easily slide this into the little compartment at the top of most airplane seats and watch a film. The last thing you might wanna do with the stand version of the wallet is potentially use it like a tripod. Now Peak Design does have a specific mobile tripod that I'm sure they would recommend over doing this. However, if you wanted to use this as a tripod, you could very easily stand it up to take pictures or videos. The one thing to note though, is that it sort of points down in its standard orientation. So you need to prop it up a little bit to make that work. Or a little hack that I developed is to actually flip it upside down. When you flip it upside down, it won't magnet quite as well, but you can get it to stand up. You probably need a bit of a counterbalance, like someone else's phone or something like that. But once you do that, you can get it to the point where you can be flat or even pointing upward a little bit and really have some flexibility to take some interesting photos or videos with a hands-free device. Durability on the cases have been fantastic. I've been using the stand case daily for about 12 months and it shows almost no wear and tear. I was a little bit concerned, honestly, about the nylon when I got it because you can mark it up pretty easily with just the swipe of a fingernail. But those marks honestly just wipe away. It's pretty impressive. You wind up right back where you started with very little effort. The final positive to call out is a little bit more about this category of product than it is about the Peak Design wallet specifically. And that is that when you have your phone and your wallet combined in one package, one less thing to take with you when you leave the house. It means you're always gonna have a credit card with you and you're much less likely to lose your wallet. Those are all super convenient aspects of the fact that you have this type of product. 
Now, when we start talking about the cons of this product, a lot of those actually have to do more with the category than about this specific wallet design. So let's talk about those. First, the combination of phone, case, wallet, and cards is pretty bulky and pretty heavy. So if you're sensitive to the weight of your phone, you might not like it. Also, if you're used to keeping this in your pocket and you don't like bulky things in your pocket, it might be a problem. For me, I've spent most of my adult life with both a personal phone and a work phone, and I often just kept both of those in the same pocket. So I got really used to this type of feeling, and it was a really easy transition for me. But if it doesn't feel like that's gonna be something that you like to have lugging around, then I totally understand. The next consideration is capacity. As I mentioned, seven cards is the recommended amount, and I've cut down to five. Now, compared to when I used to use a traditional leather wallet, that's way less than I carried around for the last 15 years. And it took a lot of downsizing to make that happen. What I wound up with is an ID, my Tesla key card, a debit card, and two credit cards, and that's it. I had to make a lot of cuts. I don't carry around my insurance card anymore. Thankfully, that's mostly on your phone now. I don't carry around other gift cards or any other types of credit cards that I might have. So think about your life and challenge yourself maybe to think about how few cards you could get by with. But keep that in mind that for some people that need to have a lot of things carried around with them, this might not work. Now, if you're in on the whole phone wallet category, this product does have a couple important call outs. And one is that this nylon material will attract a lot of hair and or animal fur. We've got a cat and it is common that I will find cat fur stuck to this case. Now, much like the scuffs, they do tend to wipe away and you are able to clean it relatively easily, but it is something that's gonna accumulate that will bug some people. I've also noticed a lot of dust buildup around the ports and around the buttons and cameras. This is not anything exclusive to this case, but you should know that there's no exception here. Next, when taking photos, particularly if you're like me and you hold your phone with your left hand primarily, it's really easy to get your finger over top of the bottom camera lens. On the iPhone camera cluster, that's the standard one times zoom, so it's really common that you use that camera lens, and if you're holding like this to take a photo, you might wind up with having your finger obstructing some of the image more often than you'd like. Now, another consideration is that if you do what I was talking about of the sort of pop socket thing, that's gonna get in the way as well. So there are some inconveniences taking photos with this on a daily basis, but they don't tend to be a deal breaker, at least not in my mind. As we talked about, the design of the four corner magnets works really well for keeping your stand case in either portrait or landscape mode. However, much like attaching to a phone without the dedicated case, when you're using the MagSafe puck, you have a similar issue with alignment. Because the round MagSafe pucks magnets don't exactly align with the squares, it's easy to successfully feel like you've magneted it on, but be slightly off from where you need in order to charge. Another consideration is the fact that the stand case I was hoping might magically be able to charge without removing it, just attaching it to the back. That's not the case, but as a compromise, you can attach it to the phone and then have the case on the back so that you can still prop it up during your day. Just be a little bit weary about the heat that that's gonna capture with your charging. That's not always great for your phone. So what do you think? Will these last me the next 15 years like my leather wallet did the previous 15? Not really sure. Will I still be using physical credit cards and a physical ID in 15 years? I also don't know that. I'm curious though, what you think of these, whether you would buy one or whether you've used one, or if there's another MagSafe wallet or potentially just phone case wallet that you think competes with these. Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to try a different type out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.